guys Andre here xenomorph.com welcome back to my channel after a summer break I'm starting to get back to the videos so stay tuned for some more uploads I hope in the coming few weeks this time we have the Iron Man War Machine from Iron Man 2 this is the re-release in diecast form and it's a magnificent piece already that I can tell you so where I have been hiding the past um, four weeks I was on vacation in the United States so me and my girlfriend did like a West Coast trip very touristy in some parts but some parts were actually really nice all those national parks over there so cool and then the last week we were in Hawaii so it was beautiful yeah and I just checked my last video it was in June so it's been already three months and it feels good to be back with this figure because it's a magnificent release as you obviously can see great details already great battle damage so I'm really happy to review this one for you and um, let's start and go for it. It's a quick rundown at the box. As you can see, gray and blue shades with a lot of white lines. It's the usual die-cast box of Hot Toys with the styrofoam in it and another layer for the base. You see it's the MMS 331 and this is the 13th die-cast figure of Hot Toys. Expect right now to pay about 300, uh, 450 US dollars EMS shipped from Hong Kong and alone the shipping will be about 60 US dollars so the actual figure price would be like 380, 390 right now in Hong Kong which is I think okay compared to the actual um, price on Sideshow which is about 360 if I'm correct. So for me, it's still a no-brainer to get the figures directly from Hong Kong. But overall, of course, the price is really hefty, really extreme, and it's getting into really extreme territories right now. I mean, all the new releases will be die-cast, so expect to pay about 400 plus with every of these cool Iron Man releases. And here we go, War Machine die-cast version out of the box and it's happening not all the time when I got really surprised and caught by by real cheer and unboxing something but this time it happened again so that was a great first experience so just getting the figure out of the box with its real heavy weight and then every little hand was covered with a tissue paper to protect it from scratching so that was really nice to see all right let's go first to the accessories as you can see you got this base there i will show this in some minutes again and then of course you get a lot of different stuff so maybe let's start with um, the secondary helmet which is basically with the roadie portrait in it i compared it to the iron patriot uh, portrait of Rhodey which is basically the same I think the color toning is a bit different this has a bit of a uh, bit more wetter look some more uh, prominent colors but overall I think the scalp is really similar then of course you've got this scratched uh, faceplate which is plastic so the whole helmet is plastic and then you got a massive amounts of battle damaged and clean armor pieces so these for example are the thrusters on the back side you have a clean one and uh, battle damage one and of course in pair and then this is a small um, clean battery compartment cover so you actually this one you would have to screw up and uh, re for replacing it this is the barrel of the minigun nice nice uh, little detail not sure I will put this one up then of course uh, shoulder armor which is battle damaged so for this one you only get this piece it's a bit of a hassle to replace it with the normal one because there's just one small um, ball ankle to, to put it on. Then a full um, chest armor plate, a clean one and of course a battle damaged one and then even a clean uh, cover for the, I think it's for the missile turret that you can lift up so this is like just a very small and tiny piece to replace but I really love the attention for detail that Hot Toys gave here. Then of course different hands all with nice weathering on it nicely painted so a salute hand, articulated hand and so on so this is really a full package here. 
then a quick look at the bass. Uh, some part of the bass really reminds me of uh, uh, an early release bass. I think it was for uh, one of the Iron Man figures. But this piece here, this uh, deactivated or that hammer drone, really uh, caught my attention because the sculpting is so nice. Also, the coloring extremely well done. And here you see the blast marks of the minigun. So, War Machine definitely tore that one apart. Alright, just some words on the history of the War Machine and how it's handled by uh, Hot Toys. So basically the first version, ca uh, version came around the corner in 2010 or 11. It was actually my second Hot Toys figure and for that time it was a great release. But it had definitely some, some cons there. So basically the articulation of the first version was not that good and overall it was not really feel feeling that heavy and that menacing so i'm really happy that they got back to this um, war machine mark one and gave us this release also i think all these stickers and imprints were not that present on the first version i think there was a discussion on the movie uh, authenticity on this part and then of course the light up features were a bit dimmed I have to say so basically the red eyes on my first version were really dimmed down and then I had a problem with the screw on the back side of the neck and I completely destroyed the neck plug or the neck adapter so that was quite a story so I'm really happy to and relieved to get this new version now all right I think we just switch on the lights let's replace the helmet so this time it works the same you see the, the red part here and you just have to lift up the upper cover and down below is the switch. The bread right now is quite quite shiny. Let's see how it stays throughout the video review. So here we go. Really nice. Just a close up. I mean, you see all these battle damaged effects in terms of the paint application. It's really far better than the first version. Also, the tone of the black, so nice. Then, on the back side, of course, you've got the battery compartment. This is the part I showed you earlier where you can put a clean one. So, you just can lift this flap, and down below is the actual, um, I think here it is, yeah. Here is the actual battery compartment. Here is the switch, which activates, of course, the arc vector on the front. So, and also here they added lots of details on the arc vector. It's crazy. So cool. Then, as usual, you've got two repulsor LEDs on both hands, and that's about it for the for the light up feature so maybe we pan out a bit and I dim down the lights so that's about the effect you can get so then let's cover the die cast parts first info the minigun is not die cast so that is a bit unfortunate I really hope that the new minigun will be die cast um, we have to compare it to the first version. I think it's better sculpt than in general just a bit more high quality. The die cast will start in the biceps. So both biceps are die cast. I think these lower uh, arms are not die cast. Also the whole torso area, at least on front, is not die cast. Um, the abs are not die cast. Then we've got the thighs which are completely die cast and so are the lower legs so this is fully die cast here you have you have the opportunity to um, show a bit of the inner workings here so these are additionally packed in the box and you just can put them on magnetically so that's quite nice and i think the um, yeah i think the feet or the boots are also not die cast so let's go to the back side As you can see, he's massive in terms of the depth and uh, depth of the of the torso. It's really massive. So I think this part here is this is plastic. 
so the back side is really all plastic then the two rifles or guns they're not replaceable anymore so they're just attached to the actual figure all plastic also so that, that would have been cool somehow to get the option to replace them like on the first figure but on the other hand the first figure had some issues there because this, the, these guns um, were not that stable and snug into the socket and they always fell out at least on mine so overall i think the die cast percentage is a bit better than on some iron man releases but it's by far not fully die cast but i think the biceps and some part of the legs are not usually die cast on the iron man figures so let's go for articulation um, on the helmet it's basically possible to put it into a 90 degree angle so perfect for a flying pose and then these shoulder armors are really nicely engineered they go on a ball joint here and you actually can place them anywhere you want so you could even place it down there uh, when you move up the, the hand and uh, the arms so there really is a nice, nice uh, concept for covering up also these gaps here. I think it's just a bit visible on my camera because of the, of the white background, but in general it's really easy to hide these gaps. Then you can of course pull out the whole um, ankles or joints on the arms to have a bit more, um, a bit more space. Then for the arm articulation, as you can see, you can pull out the whole arm with this separate uh, 30 degree angle piece and then it's basically all, everything is possible, possible here, so no real limita limitations, just be sure you don't scratch something by uh, rubbing two pieces at each other. Alright, then on the back side you've got these thrusters here that you can pull out. And you even can replace these with, as you can see here, this is a bad damage one, this is a clean one. You just have to lift it up. And then you've got two little thrusters here at the bottom. I never actually got attention to them as also on the first version, because on the first version they're also there. But you could rotate them and put them downwards or upwards. So then for the torso articulation it's quite usual, so you've got these possibilities, then of course the crunch app, you can lift up the whole uh, torso and snap it out of the, this part here. And on the back side you've got also lots of possibilities, so these are the bigger thrusters, you can put them in, you can replace them with some battle damage pieces, so here you see the scratch going down below. And also these little tiny thrusters here you can articulate. But I think this one, uh, this feature was already present on the first version, but I never got around it. So then looking at the minigun, just a quick overview on the articulation. So the ammo belt is also plastic going inside the this barrel here that you can rotate. The front barrel you also can rotate and the whole thing is rotatable in some uh, parts of the turret so you can put it into a stale position or something and let's see how we can attach the barrel damage barrel so I just found it out so you have to really remove the whole length of the barrel and then you can put in the secondary battle damage one so it's really a full battle damage for the minigun it's not like just the front part it's really a full completely destroyed minigun. Alright then for the torso part I will just show you, you have to snap it out on the left and right side. Here is the uncovered um, torso area. Let's get the clean one here. So just slide it over and then you definitely feel when it's popping into the right position. So, like this. So back to clean again and you can see it's really nicely painted even for a plastic look I love the, the actual shine of the armor on this part so then of course you've got additional weapon systems 
covered in these shoulder areas here so here is the ex-wife i put the ex-wife rocket inside the barrel here everything works a bit better than on the first version it's just better engineered and here is the actual um, missile launcher piece let's put it out and here I definitely like the shiny paint job it's not die cuts but it really looks metal like but again very very narrow space between the head sculpt and the actual rocket launcher so then the legs are really extreme so they're really wide and bulky and especially like the boots section because they have a lot of details that were not that present on the first uh, version as you can see here nice gold paint application everything is massively sculpted here you got even some flaps to put up and these parts as i said they show you some, some of the inner workings the knees of course are fully bendable so this time it's really possible to do like a 90 degree angle on the legs so you have this area here that you can actually slide up and then you basically have all the range of motion that you need to do some extreme posing so definitely a step forward and hot has really learned from their past uh, figures on this part all right let's go for a comparison with the first release of war machine mark one which was the plastic version from 2010 11 and look at this it's quite funny to compare these pieces i'm really a bit um, worried about the stabi stability on this one because without it then it's really just almost falling over but you can see in direct comparison that the new version is really much heavier and bulkier i will get an iron man figure in, in a minute to give you another comparison but let's just focus on some parts so as you can see the shoulder area got a lots more massive um, on the new one then of course the color difference so this was really like a, a gray which was okay for that time but the new one really has this shiny stealth bomber look that you need on such a figure also there was almost no battery on this one um, also quite huge color differences on the um, decals on the helmet so here you see a prominent red where this one is well it's there but almost not noticeable then really obvious it gets when you compare them just from the profile side so the bulkiness of the new release is extreme compared to the early release um, just the dimensions got a lot bigger on every little part of the figure so it's really not there's nothing reused from what i can tell if we go down below also the leg area as i said massive boots for lots of sculpting and great paint application compared to well this thing here so definitely good good upgrade for war machine and he'll definitely enjoy this new suit and you can see the decals or stickers i think the, these one on the left are the same but here on the right side on the arm you see there is this us air force logo i think where we here have this ed whatever number yeah in general i'm really happy with this release i'm almost thinking about now selling this one because i'm really running out of space so I really need space for uh, displaying the new figures and this one just uses space it's not that stable you always have to worry about so I'm really thinking about um, selling this one now but yeah maybe the nostalgic value uh, will convince me and I try to keep it but yeah we will see so let's get an Iron Man figure now all right my turn will be scanning a bit packed right now so we've got two Iron Man on the front and two the two war machines on the back so this is the original mark six where we also get a re-release soon still a magnificent release also i think the the joints are a bit loose so it has the same problem as the first war machine but you see they're somehow in size i think war machine is just a tad taller than the actual iron man and 
here for comparison with the new war machine I forgot the Mark 45 if I'm not mistaken which is called a bulky suit and it's almost as tall as the war machine as you can see um, but overall I really hope that they give us a bit of a high difference also with the new Mark 6 but man that's really epic I can't, I can't really part with my original Iron Man figures so running out of space now with every figure I get it's really hard to decide what figure I could sell to get some space for a new one um, I'm already thinking about them um, maybe get rid of some lines but it's so hard to decide because I'm a fan of Terminator, Iron Man and Aliens and Predators so maybe I will part with some Marvel figures that somehow not fit into the whole collection but it's really hard to decide alright let's wrap this video review up with last shot of War Machine in action so just one last thing before the final shot when I want to set it up for the pose I got around that here is again missing a magnet I have no idea what Hot Toys is thinking so I've got a problem um, on the left side there is a magnet down below on the right side not and again we have this issue where you can't really pose the open faceplate really the right straight way so this really pisses me off it happened on almost every Iron Man figure and now we've got it on the war machine as well so that's a bit that's a bit of a really bad quality assurance yeah just want to let you know maybe it will happen on yours too but as you can see the portrait and the likeness is really there of the actor all right and here we go final pose for war machine the die cast release i might not be the best poser but i think you can't do that wrong with this figure I put it onto the base of course I'm just not feeling it to be very secure without the base I mean you can do it it's definitely better than the first figure but uh, with a figure that expensive that heavy you definitely will scratch something if it, fl uh, it falls down so this is really cool also here just close up on the rifles that I didn't show you I think earlier you see there are even some paint highlights some yellow striping all right that's it for this video review i think overall the conclusion on this piece is if you're a diehard iron man or war machine collector this is a no-brainer especially if you get it for the retail price of 350 it's a sure shot um, 450 is a bit aggressively priced but i think overall i'm really digging this upgraded mark one suit design because i was no, never really a fan of the the streamlined jet version of the upgraded suit so this first first version with the extreme um, armor plating with the bulkiness and the tank like features was really the design to go all right i hope you enjoyed see you soon with the next video review i'm definitely passing on all these star wars releases because star wars is in general like a nice franchise i really dig the movies but i can't really get into collecting this stuff as well Alright, so see you soon, bye bye guys, have a nice day.